Welcome back to Nerd News Today. I'm Matthew, and on today's episode, Nerd News Today goes all elite. Because today we're taking a look at another action figure set from Jazzwares from All Elite Wrestling. But this is one you are not going to find in any stores. That's because today we're taking a look at the AEW Blood and Guts 2-pack of MJF and CM Punk. And the reason why you're not going to find this in any stores is because this thing literally is blood and guts. This two-pack comes exclusively from Ringside Collectibles, and it's part of their ongoing Blood and Guts AEW miniseries. And this subset between the Unrivaled and Unmatched lines is essentially what you can never ever see in stores because it's all about wrestlers being covered in blood. The first bloody two-pack was Cody Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes. That was followed up by a bloody Britt Baker, a bloody version of John Moxley and Kenny Omega from their barbed wire deathmatch, more recently a bloody Thunder Rosa figure, and now today we get what really for me is honestly one of the most highly anticipated figures of wrestling toys for for really a long time and this set is such a highly anticipated set for me because really i didn't even know if they're going to get around to making this what with all that cm punk and elite drama that unfolded not too long ago and this two pack represents the mjf versus cm punk dog collar match at aew revolution 2022. And for whatever reason, I have always wanted a dog collar match for my wrestling figures. I've always wanted the dog collar itself. And the closest we've gotten to that in the past has been, let's say, with the junkyard dog who came with a dog collar, but it's only a single dog collar, nothing attached to the other end of it. So what I believe is probably a first for wrestling figures ever, this time around we have a dual dog collar, meaning we got a collar on the end of each of the chain, and that to me is just the icing on the cake for what is a pretty interesting two-pack at first glance. Their feud had a ton of history. The match was amazing. It really is one of the best dog collar matches out there ever. And if you haven't seen it and don't mind a little bit of blood, definitely check it out. But today we're not here to talk about that match. We're talking about the figures based on it. Now, as you can see here, I'm just giving you guys a quick glance at the packaging. The packaging is great. And the reason I say it's great is because you can see everything that the toy comes with. And that includes this big window here on the front, as well as a smaller window here on one of the sides. Not the other side, only this side actually has something. And this opposite side here has the alternate heads for CM Punk and MGF, along with a few extra hands. But one of the other reasons I really enjoy this packaging is because I am an autograph hound when it comes to wrestlers and toys. I like to keep some of my toys in package to get signed by wrestlers. And for me, these two packs are perfect for getting a dual signature, meaning MJF and CM Punk signature. And that would look so cool and very unique to have it on this set right here. Now, as for the back of the packaging, uh, avert your eyes if you cannot handle even more blood and guts. But yeah, we have an actual photo from that dog collar match, and there you guys go. But really, that's all I need to say about the packaging. And at this point, I really have been waiting such a long time for this pack. I was so worried it was never going to get here. It's finally here, so it's time now to take these figures out of the box and bring them into the ring. All right, and here is our MJF and CM Punk 2-pack out of the box and in the ring. Now, I want to point out to you guys, this is just a nice wide shot to show you the figures side by side. One thing that's kind of fun just out of the package is that they're actually taped together. Or rather, not quite taped, but they have little rubber bands on them. You can see on MJF on his left hand and on both of CM Punk's hands that there's little rubber bands there that's securing the chain around their hands. Make sure it stays in place inside the packaging. So that's just a point for you Mint on Card collectors that I wanted to let you know about, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove those now and then we'll start talking about the figures properly. All right, so I've now got those rubber bands off of both of our figures and now you can just kind of see them standing next to each other. They're still in a battle pose, but yeah, they are ready to go. And the nice thing about them is that you don't need little tiny rubber bands to actually have them hold up those chains. They're holding them just fine. And so since that really is kind of like the biggest thing about this toy here, the dog collar, I want to start by talking about the dog collar itself. And it is an actual chain. It's really nice, you know? This is a wrestling accessory I've been waiting for in toy form for the longest time, because it's really like one of the most elusive ones out there. We've gotten things close and similar, like, you know, Junkyard Dog has a chain, but it's only for one neck. This, I believe, is the first time that this has been this way from one of the bigger toy companies. I think Boss Fight Studio may have, in fact, done a dog collar match in one of their accessory packs. I'm pretty sure they might have. But again, their toys are a little bit smaller, uh, so I don't quite know how well those will match up with things like Mattel and AEW. They're pretty close in scale, mind you. They're very, very close. They're just not completely in scale. That might be a video for another day is comparing the two of them. But yeah, this is the dog collar and it's really nice, pretty good solid chain. And uh, it's also fairly long too. How long is it, you ask? Well, let's find out here. And I'll put them both in opposite corners of the ring of this way this is set up here. And this is the authentic scale ring from Wicked Cool Toys. So it's like 22 by 22 or something like that. And uh, you can see, mind you, I still have the chain uh, wrapped a little bit in CM Punk's hand, so it's not completely taut. 
But to me, that says that it's at the very least over 20 inches long. So that's pretty great. That's uh, that's a lot of bang for your buck. And the fact that it's a real chain makes it even better because really that's kind of what you want all along. You don't want to have any kind of fake chain or whatever. So it's nice that it's legit, not just molded plastic. So I want to talk about now the collars next because that's a pretty huge detail and a pretty major part of this toy. And I specifically want to talk about how the collars are sitting on these guys. And uh, I'm going to go ahead now and just pop them off because it looks like the way you get them off is just by popping heads. So yep, just that easy as so we decapitate MJF and CM Punk, which I feel like there's a lot of people on either side of that argument who would be happy to do that. But yeah, so it's going to pop off. Here's the collar itself, which looks pretty good also. It's got some nice paint detail, some good sculpting in there also. You can see it's actually a little bit of a texture to it. So that's a nice collar. And the good thing about this too is for the most part, I think it's going to fit just about any other AW guy because it looks actually pretty wide. So we are going to test that a little bit later on. But I wanted to show it to you guys off right now, and this way we can also remove the dog collar and start talking about these toys proper. So both figures uh, don't necessarily have a ton of parts that we haven't seen before, but the way they're presented here with the blood makes them look pretty darn exciting. But I want to start this conversation by talking about one of the most important parts of this that isn't the dog collar, and that's the likenesses on these two figures. So again, we've seen the CM Punk, we've seen MJF before. So the question is, are these good head sculpts? And I feel like with Jazzwares, the head sculpts can often be one of the weaker things about them. I hate to say it, but it's true. Some of these head scans can be hot garbage. In the case of CM Punk, uh, I think the heads are actually very good on him. He has two heads, I'll show you the other one in a moment, but and that goes for both of his heads. They both look really good to me. Right now, the head that's on this current body is him with the mouth closed. Uh, and MJF also, he has his mouth closed head on as well. And uh, MJF looks pretty decent too. I will say of the two, I believe that Punk has the stronger head sculpts. MJF's is not bad, it's not terrible. Uh, we'll compare it to an older figure a little bit later on, but uh, at the very least, like this head isn't so bad. But as I mentioned, they each come with alternate head sculpts. So, and here is MJF's alternate head sculpt. This is him yelling and screaming, still covered in blood. But this is his head sculpt. And this is CM Punk's head sculpt, also screaming and covered in blood. A true Crimson Mask for the CM Punk figure here. So for my money, I think that the alternate head sculpts look better, actually, than the ones that are currently on them, especially the MJF one. I mean, again, I think the Punk ones are very good, um, but this other one here with him screaming in agony uh, and covered in way more blood, I think that one is just absolutely way more close to how he actually looks. Same thing with MJF. But I think the thing that I'm running into with the alternate MJF head is something I've said in the past also, is the paint job on him. I think that's what's throwing it off because I think the sculpt is probably really good but some of the paint is kind of weird. Like I still don't really like how Jazzwares does their eyes. Uh, I've got some other problems with some things here and there, like the fairly simple painting job on the rest of the hair for this figure. The beard is okay, but overall, yeah, I think uh, the screaming head expression is really great. It's the paint that's knocking it down a few points. And that also might be the reason why I'm actually digging these bloodier heads a little more too, is because it kind of helps hide some of the weaker paint detail, I think. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I think that kind of works in their favor. So I do want to do a head swap just to show you guys how that works, and we'll pop them both out right now. So we'll, one more time, decapitate MJF and put his alternate head sculpt on here. And we'll do the same thing with our CM Punk. And the nice thing about this Punk too, you note, is that he's wearing his Ring of Honor gear here. And this came out before his other figure was announced because they are doing a classic style Ring of Honor Punk. Uh, at an upcoming line, but yeah, the minute I saw this figure, I was like, oh yeah, that means they're doing Ring of Honor things, because they wouldn't waste tooling just for this two-pack with Ringside Collectibles. And that's not a knock to Ringside, it's just the truth. It's just how toys work. So, the fact that we have that outfit here, that's pretty great. And uh, yeah, let's spend some time on the outfits here as well. It's not really a ton to talk about with them, because this is, after all, two shirtless wrestlers. Neither of them come with any entrance gear. It's not really important to this two-pack. Punk has on his Ring of Honor style shorts with the triple X down the sides and Punk on the opposite side over there. He's got his classic black, very simple kick pads. MJF is clad in white boots with his lion head on the side of the boots as well. The outfit here is this kind of bright green and very shiny sort of a paint that they're using for it. It's metallic green. He has uh, the same line that's on his boots is represented here on his trunks. And on the back, it has MJF on his butt. Yeah, you know, a lot of wrestlers, when they compete in these kind of bloody matches or matches that we expect to be bloody, they'll tend to wear white, which is like what CM Punk is wearing. It's kind of this like off-white color, really. But they tend to wear white because it shows the blood better. MJF did something different, and that was wearing green, which, believe it or not, is also a pretty smart choice because red and green are excellent colors to have side by side. There's a reason why Christmas trees are all about the whole red and green kind of look. So while white will show the blood a lot more obviously, the green will help it pop a lot more. Let's spend some time talking about some of the paint job on the body as well. 
Uh, mind you, MJF is a lot simpler than CM Punk here. He has his lion head logo that we've already seen across his outfit on his arm over here. He's got some wrist tape, and uh, this is actually uh, sculpted onto his hands, the wrist tape in this case. His other hand has some sort of texture, but it's mostly just painted, but uh, the right hand actually does have some actual kind of feel to it. So that's cool. Now, CM Punk is covered in tattoos, and we saw this with the very first CM Punk release as well. And I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison in a few moments, but tattoos are very nice. Tons of detail all over these. I mean, you can see a lot of stuff going on here. It's, it's a lot. But the thing that separates these two figures from the rest of the figures out there from AEW is that this is the blood and guts line, after all, which means they're covered in blood. And now it's time we get into that. And both of these guys are just drowning in blood, whether it's their faces, whether it's on their body, on their outfits, even on their legs. This is bloody. <laughs> this is what you want with the Blood and Guts toys. This is why you're only going to find this from ringside collectibles, not in any stores. But yeah, these guys are just drip, drip, drippy with that sanguine liquid. How's that for some fancy words right there, folks? The kind of fun thing about these toys also is they're all going to be slightly different. I think the heads especially will, for the most part, match and look like and look identical across different purchases, but the blood on their bodies and a lot of the drips, while there is some patterns to it, a lot of it is gonna be a little bit more random. So everyone might be different. I mean, the major things like, the, like I said, the drips on the chest and these bigger marks, and especially their gloves and uh, rather their wrist wraps, that kind of thing, that'll be fairly close. But the little splatter effects, like the splatters on their legs especially, and like their chest, that's gonna probably differ figure to figure. That's what I think I saw previously in some other reviews of other folks' toys of similar Blood and Guts toys. Uh, so that's kind of just a little fun thing to note. And yeah, the blood is actually even on their backs too, which is kind of cool too, because it's, it's also accurate. Uh, and it's more so not just that like their backs are bleeding. It's also a little bit that they're going to be bleeding onto each other, <laughs> which is a real pro wrestling kind of thing to do. So, you know, if someone has somebody to hold, they're going to start bleeding all over them. So we're getting a little bit of that in toy form. And again, that's why these figures really aren't for every single collector out there, because a lot of folks might be rightfully fairly grossed out by all this. No harm, no foul, but this is what I'm looking for because I want hardcore dog collar, and that's what we got right here. Let's talk about articulation a little bit. I'm going to use uh, MJF, I think, for this part here. That's not to say CM Punk is less articulated. They have identical articulation, really no hindrances uh, between the two of them. The only major difference are the shorts, but I don't think that really does much for them. But AEW figures, I think the one big thing that they have over Mattel's figures is that their articulation is really great right out of the box. I don't think I've had any really stiff joints out of there for the most part, or very few and far between if I do. But yeah, you have the classic ball-jointed head, which moves up and down. You saw how easy the heads came on and off already. Uh, the ball joints in the shoulders are great. Really nice and smooth movement there. We've got the bicep swivel. They all have double-jointed elbows, so you can get some nice holds right out of the box with these guys. Uh, and likewise, the wrists can bend and flex. They do all the things. The torso, the chest part here, can in fact move a little bit, a lot of it actually, and you can do nice bridges with these guys. And part of that is also because of their waists. The waists, fully articulated. The legs now, we've got, again, similarly great articulation there. Look at MJF doing a full-on split here. <laughs> yeah, and that's, you want to talk about super kick party, there you go. Uh, since his leg is hanging out up there too, you guys can see double jointed knee on all the figures. You got boot articulation, and ankle rotation and movement there. So really great articulation across the board. It, these really are the tops as far as maneuverability. They almost rival an Ultimate Edition, just like the way they are off the bat. The only thing missing from these guys is a butterfly joint and a toe joint. And other than that, um, these guys are, are pretty much pretty darn close to an Ultimate or an AEW Supreme Edition. Now I'm going to start doing some figure comparisons here, and that's also going to lead into another point I have, which is another one of the fun things that AEW figures can do that WWE figures from Mattel cannot do. So this is an earlier release of MJF here, as you can see. He is not covered in blood. Uh, he's wearing a black outfit, as opposed to the green outfit here on this bloody MJF. So, okay, here's the thought. We know we can swap heads. What if I want to have him with a bloody head? Okay, let's do that right now, just to show you that. Heads come off pretty easy, and they go back on just as easily. All right, so there you go. There's a bloody MJF head now. But what if I want the body to match it? Well, good news. You can do that. AEW figures are all modular. You can first pop out any joints that you want and do whatever you want with that case. So yeah, if I want to get this body together here, so I have blood with a black outfit, you can do that incredibly easily. And just like that, heads back in place. And now I've got a bloody MJF in his black outfit 
didn't need to heat up any joints, didn't need to do anything fancy. It's just that easy. And that really is such a great thing. Like, you know, there's a lot of folks who do some serious heavy duty customizing. That means painting your figures and all sorts of dremeling potentially, and even adding epoxy and stuff to really make guys into stuff. But with AW Jazzwares, they're fairly modular right off the bat. So little work needed to make one guy into multiple guys. That's something I know a lot of folks probably wish like the Ultimate Edition series from WWE could do. Um, but, you know, because I always talk about having different parts, that kind of thing. It's not impossible, but the way those joints work, it's a lot more difficult to pop in and out as opposed to these Jazz Wars figures. And likewise, here's our CM Punk. I'm going to move the first Punk release with him. So you can see those two guys side by side, assuming they both want to stand. I got to tell you, this Punk figure, for whatever reason, having a tough time standing in the ring. And to be fair, actually, so is this other Punk. I don't know why or how, but they're both having some issues. Uh, oddly enough, it seems like one of them is a little bit taller than the other. That's kind of weird. Or, or like the bloody head seems to be a little bit bigger. I don't know. I'm not sure what's up with that, but they do look kind of big to me, don't they? But otherwise, uh, you know, again here, they both have the same hand wraps, just different are that these are bloody, these are not. Uh, this is, if you look out here, the long pants version of Punk as well. So he's got his proper Chicago boots on, whereas Ring of Honor style Punk does not. Uh, and... Really, the other key difference between the two of these guys is in their tattoos. So the Blood and Guts version, I believe, seems to have a little bit of a slightly lighter application of the tattoos, as opposed to the initial release of CM Punk here. I think these are a little bit darker. Likewise, it feels like the placement of the stomach tattoo might be a little bit different also. Kind of hard to tell with all the blood there. It looks like, it looks like it's pretty close, but something does seem a little bit off between the two of these guys. And it's funny because I have Bloody Punk here actually like hunkered down a little bit more than this one. Like, Original release here is actually standing up pretty straight. This one's here is, is hunkered down. He still feels kind of tall. You guys let me know what you think about that in the comments, but uh, you know, let me know if it's just me, but I think that's the case here. It's weird, but there you go. And again, if you want to have a bloody punk on more recent style outfit, all you gotta do is pop the head, you can pop the body. It's all the same, but there you go. There's a bloody punk with his initial outfit from Jazzwares. So you might be wondering why this review suddenly has Powerhouse Hobbs and Malachi Black here. Well, that's because, as I mentioned earlier, I want to do some more comparisons, not just putting toys side by side with each other. I meant comparing how these guys go with the dog collar on. And the reason I chose these two is because Malachi is a Supreme Edition and Powerhouse Hobbs is, well, frankly, a larger figure. He's one of the bulkier figures that uh, Jazzwares has done for these guys. So I want to see how that works. Supreme Edition, it's going to make no difference, pretty sure. Uh, but I mean, it looks like, yeah, just like that, that's going on. And just like that, that's going on. So we'll put Malachi's head on first. And now we'll pop on Powerhouse Hobbs's head also. And okay, that was pretty easy. So the one thing I am noticing when I do this is guys with longer hair might have some trouble. Uh, because yes, it is going on, but it's absolutely hindering his mobility. You could see it's like the collar is right in the crook of his neck and the way his hair is. It's just, you know, gonna make it pretty hard to do a lot of movement with his head. I think he'll still move left to right a little. Yeah, he'll still move left to right but I think you'll, you'll lose a good amount of range of motion with that. I don't think Powerhouse Hobbs is going to suffer from that as much because his neck, uh, while it's thicker, doesn't have any hair in the back. So I think that's the one thing you have to actually be more careful about is wrestlers with longer hair are going to have a harder time wearing the dog collar. But otherwise, I mean, it works for both of them, right? I mean, this looks pretty solid to me. So that right there makes it a good investment. But we're not done with the comparisons yet. I have right now an Ultimate Edition Macho Man, and I have an Elite Eddie Guerrero. I want to try and see right now if this AEW Jazzwares dog collar can fit on these figures too, because that would make it a legit game changer. So let's pop some heads and let's get these guys ready for a dog collar match, because everybody always wanted to see Eddie Guerrero and Macho Man have a dog collar match, right? Like, who didn't? All right, let's see if we can get it on Eddie. Okay, all right, well, <laughs> this is good. It's yeah, That went in real easily. Let's see if we can do the same for Macho Man, because he has longer hair also. That's why I'm trying him out here, but it fits both guys. Both guys are wearing the dog collar. So again, talk about a game changer. There you go. So there you go. Just that easy. I got Eddie Guerrero and Macho Man Randy Savage wearing the dog collars. And uh, it's not really hindering their necks at all, actually. Uh, Eddie Guerrero, no problems. He has short hair, so it really shouldn't have been an issue. I was more worried about Macho because of his longer hair. But it's in there. He's not losing any range of motion. And I think part of that is because I feel like AEW figures tend to be a little bit thicker in some ways than the Mattel figures are. I mean, yeah, I'll bring in a CM Punk over here just so we can kind of do a comparison. And like, yeah, this CM Punk, he looks pretty huge compared to Macho Man. Body-wise a little bit, I feel like he's a little bit thicker. I think it's just the thing with most of the Jazz Wars figures. I don't know. To me, they always felt a little bit more bulky, but yeah, fact is you can get this dog collar on Mattel figures. So right there, that's some real serious extra added value 
that you're getting a proper dog collar now to use on either your AEW figures or your WWE figures. And one more note about these two toys here, in addition to the dog collar that you've already seen in great detail, in addition to the alternate head sculpts they come with, this two pack also includes a healthy serving of additional hands. And when I say that I mean that because they come with an additional eight hands each, meaning you've got a grand total of 10 hands in this pack here. I'm not going to try them all on right now in this video, I'm, I am going to take some photos of them so you can see them in action, but talk about again extra value here. Each guy getting additional hands. For CM Punk that means some more knife hands, it means some open hands, it means some hands that close stuff. They're all fairly easy to discern as well who goes to who, but yeah again really good. Very very nice addition, making this set an even better value than it already is. So final thoughts about our CM Punk and MJF 2 pack here. Uh, this was a day one buy for me, and I stand by that. I've been a little iffy about AEW figures for quite some time now. I've gotten to detail about it in other videos, but yeah, I've definitely had a lot of problems with them. They've been problematic in a lot of ways, but this two-pack here kind of made me forget all about that. The novelty of having bloody wrestlers, number one, is pretty darn awesome and very unique, but finally getting that dog collar and knowing that it fits on other figures from other toy lines as well, that's just like icing on the bloody cake right here. As always, Jazzwear's articulation, I think, is really excellent. You can get these guys in some poses right off the bat with no problems. The modularity of these guys is also excellent. With practically no effort, you could swap body parts and make entirely new wrestlers or swap pieces, whatever you want to do. You have that ability to customize with no problems. And in this case, the likenesses are, for the most part, ranging from good to very good. Likenesses across the board in AEW figures are things I'd like to see them improve on. Don't know how, don't know when, but that's something I'd like to see, and I know I'm not alone in that. But these bloody sculpts always look better to me. I don't know what it is. They, it just, the blood helps them, I guess. I don't know, but they look really good like this. And fact is, you're going to want these heads. You're going to want these bloody heads, even if you don't want necessarily the bloody bodies. You're going to want the heads for your other toys, if you're doing figure photography or whatever, if you're collecting this kind of stuff. You're going to want them to really spice things up in your photos. The nice thing about this two-pack is I don't think it's going to sell out anytime soon on ringside. So that said, I recommend you guys pick these two figures up. And again, they are exclusive to Ringside Collectibles, so if you want to get them, go to ringsidecollectibles.com. My advice is wait for a nice big sale, when they do sales quite often. Wait for a nice big sale, wait for them to kind of start dropping in price, and then go ahead and pick these guys up. You won't be disappointed. And even for me paying full price, I'm just as happy. But my advice to you is be a little bit more patient and say wait even a few months from now. These guys will probably drop at least 5 to $10, maybe even more by Black Friday. But let me know what you think about these figures in the comments below and who you want to see Jazzwares do a Blood and Guts 2-pack of next. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been our look at the ringside exclusive AEW Blood and Guts 2-pack of CM Punk and MJF. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time here with more wrestling content and everything else we do here on this channel. It'd be a bloody mistake to not subscribe, so go ahead and fix that right now. Why? Because MJF is better than you, and you know it. Tell me when I'm lying.